Hello, I'm Joe from Camera Lessons Online and today we're talking about focus stacking. Let's go. So July is macro month here at Camera Lessons Online. We're doing all things macro. And in the last video, we spoke about how when you're really close to your subject, when you're approaching the one-to-one -one ratio, you naturally have a shallower depth of field, almost independent of what aperture you choose. And we shot some images at F8, and we noticed that, hey, if I've got an F8 image, it still is a really shallow depth of field, just maybe with a little bit more wiggle room than if it was at F2.8. So we said that to get around that, you either had to ruin the macro image by pulling the camera farther away, right, increasing your proximity, or you had to do focus stacking, which I said was going to warrant its own video, and here we go. As always, everything we do here is brought to you by Camera Lessons Online. We've got the website, we've got the business, and that's going to have our four-hour introduction to photography course. We've got several books we've written, one of them on macro photography, highly recommended. Uh, so here we go. Focus stacking is the focusing version of HDR, where you shoot a variety of pictures at different focus distances, then you merge them in software in order to create one image with multiple range in focus. Now there's gonna be some things that we've gotta keep in mind regarding this. First, you want your exposure to be identical throughout all of the images, otherwise you get some strange variants when you merge them, so manual exposure is best. Second, you have to give latitude for focus breathing. We've spoken about focus breathing before on this channel, but this is where the actual focusing of your lens slightly changes your uh, focal length, and that changes the edges of your frame. And we notice it with macro imagery a lot. And it affects the way we stand, the way that we set up a shot, the way we place our camera. But also, if we focus stack, we're gonna be moving our focusing ring, we're gonna change the edges of our photograph, and therefore the edge of the shot is going to change in the final image. So we have to give latitude for that to happen. Third thing we need to think about is windage. Um, if you're shooting, and there's any wind, you're gonna move your subject, it's gonna be very difficult to get images that have the subject in the same part of the frame. This requires a lot of patience. And just to make sure that we had something that was a really good demonstration tool for today's video, I'm doing pictures of a ruler. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, we tend to do this with flower images. We just have to be very patient and hope that there's no wind. So. There's a couple things that we do when we're, when we're doing a series. We want it to be a lot of pictures with very small movements in between. When I've done this with the automated sequence on a D850, what I've done is taken the camera and uh, had the amount of change in the lens's uh, focusing range turned down pretty much all the way in order to get as smooth of a range as I could. Um, if you are doing this manually, you want a, a, a macro lens with a lot of throw in the barrel so that you can do very small movements. Uh, obviously, we have to do this in manual focus. We start at one end, either up close or the farthest away, and we work the other direction until we're done. Uh, the last piece of advice is that we need to have some symbol that the focus stack series is beginning or ending. My favorite is to be in manual focus and just have my fingers cover part of the frame. And I do that so that I can bring my images in and say, all right, there I've got some out of focus fingers in the frame. What's after that is gonna start my focus stack series and I go from there until another shot with blurred fingers in the frame. And that's gonna be my range. I can pick that up and I can focus stack it. So we're gonna be focus stacking today in Affinity Photo. I'm just gonna show you how we do that, which is basically taking the images and letting the software go at it. So here we go. Right here, you're gonna see that I have my focus stacked images, and I actually have about 50 of them, and they are in their own folder on my desktop, just so I can find them very easily. And of course, as we've discussed, when you have an individual image, you have a really shallow depth of field, and as I change my focus distance with these two images, of course, I'm just shifting that forwards and backwards, but that, that range is still very shallow no matter what. Now, we're actually going to be creating a stacked image. I'm going to show you what the end product is going to be, and it's going to look like this, which, of course, is a much longer depth of field than we, of course, had before. So let's see how we're going to create that. I'm going to go over here, and in my case, I'm using Affinity Photo, but you're going to have lots of options with softwares that can do this. And I'm just going to go to a new focus merge in my particular case. 
and it's going to ask me for the images that I want. And I'm just going to hit Add. And I know the folder that I need them from. And so what I'm going to do is take the images that I want, the whole group of them, and I'm going to hit Open. And it's going to double check all of these individual images. And they're all just images of this ruler that have slightly shifted um, the, uh, uh, the focus distance. And I could add or remove any of them. But I know that these are going to work, so I'm just going to hit OK. And realistically, that's about everything that I have to do with most focus stacking softwares. If you get weird alignment issues or things like that, you might find the image that's slightly different and remove it from the stack, and they'll merge more effectively. But if you're going to give yourself the ability to do that, you need to shoot uh, a lot of images with very little difference so that you're not missing that part of the in focus series. So what's going to happen here is first it's going to align all these images, and we're seeing that happening. And then it's going to uh, find the area in focus, and it's going to uh, take those and tone map them all together. This is going to take a little while to run in my particular case. Oh, there it's showing the merge process. Uh, it's going to take a little while to run uh, just because it's 50 images. So we're going to let that go for a while, and then we are going to come back and see what it looks like. We have finished the tone mapping. Uh, which is the merge of all the images, and that tone mapped layer, what becomes your final image, is sitting on top. And that's what we're looking at here. Now, this is not a video about how to work with a particular software, uh, and so I'm not going to get into what we would do if we wanted to alter this image. What's important is just that we have it, and your major photo editing softwares are able to do this built in. Um, this is Affinity Focus doing it. Uh, my favorite and easiest results have usually come from Helicon Focus, that this worked very well. And as you can see now, uh, I, I got bored after 50 pictures, and I pulled you know, something in the neighborhood of about three inches, a little bit less than three inches um, of of range here, shooting at f2.8 for all these exposures. So at this point, I'd be able to go and I'd be able to uh, save this um, uh, particular file if I wanted to keep working with it or export it as a JPEG or whatever form I wanted. And I'm going to go over here because I already did that. And this is my finished JPEG. And if you did this with any series, you could do a focus stack series where two flowers sitting next to each other in focus. I particularly like it when someone does maybe 10 or 15 images that's just the middle of a flower in focus. And so it's a very subtle effect. But however you do it, uh, focus stacking is the way that we build longer depth of field into macro images. So focus stacking, there's several uh, ways that we can do this. Photoshop can do it. Affinity Focus can, uh, Affinity Photo can do it. Uh, probably the best results I've ever produced have been with Helicon Focus. Um, that, that software has worked great for me. All it really does is, is tone mapping a focus stack series. Uh, and I've, I've pulled my best results out of that. But however you do it, this is how we pull longer depth of field when doing macro imagery. Uh, as always, if this was helpful or useful, uh, then uh, I hope that you like it. I hope you subscribe. Um, and thank you so much for taking your time to watch. I'll see you next time. Bye.